Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jax from Snack Detour, and today I'm going to be doing a quick unboxing, demo, and review of this super cheap robot vacuum. So this Cal Caloric home vacuum only costed about $100 Canadian. You can find comparable vacuums, they're pretty much all gonna be the same, whether it's from Walmart, Amazon, Costco, um, anything in the sub $100 range is going to be about the same in terms of capability. Um, this one, it says that it has anti-fall sensors, uh, ionic air purifier technology, runs 40 to 60 minutes working time, dust capacity of 0.2 liters, um, has these adapter side brushes, and even comes with a, a remote. Uh, I don't know how useful that's going to be because considering if you're buying a robot vacuum, you're not going to want to control it, you're just going to want to let it do its thing. So uh, yeah, we'll see how this stacks up um, to the much more expensive um, big companies like Nido and Roomba and uh, yeah, let's get unboxing. So from the size of the box, you can tell that there is no base that this robot back goes back to. So um, that's kind of a con considering these other robot backs have a base that it retracts to. So when this runs out of batteries, when it's done cleaning, done cleaning, uh, it basically just stops wherever it stops, which kind of sucks. So I'll take this out. This is what it looks like, it's kind of small. Doesn't have any uh, roller brushes or anything like that to pick up uh, hair. Um, basically, it's only good for loose dirt, loose hair. It's not gonna do carpets that well. Comes with these brushes, manual. I assume this is a cleaning brush to clean the vacuum itself. The remote, like I said earlier, if you're going to, I don't know, control it. Another brush, so it has two brushes and a charging cord, that's it. That's, it's pretty basic as you can see. You got the robot vac, the two uh, brushes that go underneath, a charging cord that you have to plug in directly. So make sure if you're going to use this, you're gonna have to look around if it's stuck under furniture if you're done. So that's kind of crappy. Yeah, so let's uh, let's get this charged up and uh, test it out. So after charging this thing, I've tested it out and honestly, it's not bad for the price, but it's also not that good. So because it doesn't have a roller brush here, um, these, these uh, hands or brushes, they spin and they feed, the, they feed the vacuum suction that's like right here. And it's, it'll pick up like loose dirt and loose hair, but um, if you have uh, an area rug or a carpet, it, this, this robot vac would not be very good. So this robot vac here is only good for hardwood or tiles, like I said. Um, the, the dirt bin in this thing is very small. So if I take it out, you can see right here, it's, it's tiny. So you pop it off over here, open it up, and basically this is the capacity that the dirt and hair can fit. Uh, the first time I ran this fully, uh, it was packed to the brim. So if you have two pets like I do, I have two corgis, um, a, small vac, a small robot vac like this is insufficient. You're gonna need something bigger or you're gonna have to run this multiple times. So here's the remote. There's a respond button at the top. Uh, there's a start button and then directional buttons that you can control the robot vac. There's focus, random, and auto. If you just 
press the start button on here and turn it on, it will automatically start on auto. Um, random, it kind of bumps between anything that hits, it just goes into a different direction. Uh, auto, it's supposed to vacuum in straight lines, but I feel that auto and random are pretty much the same thing. It just does whatever it wants kind of deal. Uh, focus, it kind of starts off uh, in a single area and just keeps doing boxes until it goes outwards. Um, all in all, this the different functions don't really make a difference. I, I, I think focus is probably the most useless one, auto or random. It doesn't really matter because like it's 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 all going to be the same thing. So as you can see with the remote, you can manually control it if you see that you missed a spot. However, if you're gonna do that, you might as well just bust out your normal vacuum and just vacuum it yourself because this thing, it, it turns like a little bit and then, and then it just does its own thing. It wants to keep trying to do its own thing. So you might as well just let it go off on random or auto and uh, let's do its thing and then whenever it stops use the respond button to see where it's at and uh, discard the dirt and hair. So of course this vacuum has no docking station it also has uh, no mapping or LIDAR um, function so sometimes it could just end up being stuck if like a bumper is like kind of stuck open um, it'll just be under furniture or something uh, so you can use make sure you have this remote handy so you can press the respond button and it beeps and uh, you're able to locate where it would be so you can unstick it and let it go run its course again um, however whenever the battery is fully dead it just stops right on its tracks so however there's enough juice it stops with enough juice so that when you press the respond button, it, it will beep back so you know where it is. So at least they thought of that. So all in all, would I buy this thing again? The answer would have to be no. Uh, it's $100, it's cheap, but you get, with, you get what you pay for. If I were to do it all over again, I would spend the extra $100 and get like a Ufi 11, which has a, a charging base. It can run on a schedule, this can't. This, you have to find it, plug it in. For extra $100, you get times three the capacity of this dustbin. So the UV11 has a 0.6 liter uh, capacity. This only has a 0.2. So that in itself is worth the extra $100 because I don't know how well uh, this was performing after it was like packed full of uh, dust and uh, dog hair. So pony up the extra two, the extra hundred dollars and get the Ufi 11. I'll leave the link below for it. It's highly recommended. Um, there's a lot of reviews on that particular uh, vacuum. My friends have it. It's pretty good. However, if you want to get a way better robot vacuum, you want to spend the extra money and get something really good, I would suggest going for like a Nito or a Roomba. Either or of those two big brands have uh, really great vacuums and they last long. I've had my Nito Signature XV series for about seven years and it's still running strong. I've replaced like the roller brushes and um, filters and of course uh, batteries, but seven years, it's pretty good for ownership. And that will run you around the anywhere from the 400 to $800 range, um, but but in that range, you can't go wrong. Um, the longevity of that kind of product is way better than uh, cheap things like this will, that will end up just in a landfill. So I'll leave a link for the Nido and uh, Roomba that I suggest uh, down below as well. And you can pick it depending on your budget, but I would definitely not go for any kind of $100 vacuums, uh, robot vacuums, because they're all gonna be about the same, trash. Um, so I'm going to run this until it dies and then after that probably uh, get something better.
But anyways, thanks for tuning in and uh, make sure that you subscribe, hit that bell for the notification for uh, more videos like this. Um, yeah, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye!